Okay, uh, welcome to <clears throat> Business 311 at Huntington College. My name is Dr. James Joy, and today we're going to look at uh, something from Chapter 8, and we're going to look at understanding how risk for a single asset is measured. Now, when we look at risk, it's very hard to quantify. So there are a number of different ways in which we can try to quantify risk. Now, one way we can do it is we can look at the rates of return <clears throat> and we can calculate the range. So that is going to be the first method. Okay. Now, if you go back here, we're looking at the textbook now. Section 8.2 deals with the risk of a single asset. <clears throat> In this section, we refine our understanding of risk. Surprisingly, the concept of risk changes when the focus shifts from the risk of a single asset held in isolation to the risk of a portfolio of assets. Here we examine different statistical methods to quantify risk. Later, we'll apply those methods to portfolios. So here, they're taking the things that you learned in business statistics one and two and trying to apply it to finance in the form of risk. Okay, The notion that risk is somehow connected to uncertainty is intuitive. The more uncertainty, excuse me, the more uncertain you are about how an investment will perform, the riskier that investment seems. Scenario analysis provides a simple way, and we're using the word simple here, it's simple, to quantify that institution, that intuition, excuse me, and probability distributions offer, offer an even more sophisticated way to analyze the risk of an investment. So what we're trying to do here is square a circle. Okay, We're trying to take something like uncertainty and quantify it using probability. Scenario analysis is an approach for assessing risk that uses several possible alternative outcomes or scenarios to obtain a sense of the variability among returns. Okay. One measure of risk is the range of the possible outcomes. <clears throat> the range is found by subtracting the return associated with the pessimistic optim outcome from the return associated with the optimistic outcome. The greater the range, the more variability or risk the asset is said to have. Different scenarios for two investments here. Each investment requires the same amount of money, $10,000. Investment A and investment B. So here for A, we have the most pessimistic outcome, and we're going to use, this is for A, and that is 13% return. You kill for that now. Um, so here, the most pessimistic or the worst case scenario is we expect to earn 13% on asset A. The most optimistic outcome for A is 17 percent. Okay. Now when we get to asset B, pessimistic for B, optimistic for B, the most pessimistic outcome for B is 7 percent. And the most optimistic outcome for B is 23. Now each one of these return, these investments, B and A, have the same expected rate of return, 15%, generally speaking. But here, one of them is riskier than the other. So to calculate the range for A, we're going to take the 17%, which is the optimistic outlook, and subtract the 13%, which is the most pessimistic scenario, 
and we're going to get a range of 4%. When we look at asset B here, we see that the range for B, the optimistic result is a 23% or scenario is a 23% return minus the most pessimistic result, which is a 7%. So here, the range is going to be equal to 16%. This implies greater variability in the possible return that we could get from asset B. This implies a lower variability. Therefore, there's more risk involved with uh, asset B. Now, for the same return, we expect both of these expected outcome is a 15% return. And they're both the same price we would go or buy, if these were our only two choices, investment A, because we're getting the same expected return with less risk. Remember, there's a trade-off between risk and return. To get me to accept more risk, you have to increase the return that I'm getting on these two assets. Asset B is riskier, but we're going to get the same expected return. Why undertake this greater risk if we aren't going to get a greater return. We wouldn't. So all other things being equal, we're going to buy investment A. Thank you for your time. Um,